we're here with New York Times bestselling indie author Alessandra Torre, who is the founder of AnchorsCon as well. And I'm so excited you're willing to chat today. Thank you for being here. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. It's my favorite thing to do, talk Yay. shop. So. <laughs> yes, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> if you guys haven't heard of Alessandra, she, uh, I think I first found you on your YouTube channel a uh, long time ago. It was so awesome. It's so helpful. The back of the day. Yeah. Yes, right? It's so many good videos. And then um, I joined your Facebook group, the Alessandra, is it Alessandra Torre Inc.? Inkers. Inkers. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what yeah. I thought. Okay. And then I discovered your conference, AnchorsCon, back in 2021. So I'm super excited to talk about AnchorsCon. It was so good. For those watching, I should say really quick, if you haven't heard of AnchorsCon, it's this conference. You could probably describe it better than me, but I'm going <laughs> to attempt it. Right, go um, <laughs> I'm happy to jump in. You can go for it, whichever. Okay, you. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you feel free to add to it. But um, I just think it's super cool because it helps independent fiction authors like us take our like writing and our editing, publishing, marketing, all to the next level and builds a thriving author career and helps us do that. Um, but for me, what made it stand out was how you brought in, uh, what is it, 27 now mm -hmm. different authors, yeah. like all these amazing, basically mentors to help us and people who have been there and done it and they have the success and then they come and teach us on that. I thought that was so cool. I love that. And my favorite thing about <laughs> AnchorsCon is it's 100% online. So if yes. you're listening or watching this and AnchorsCon has already launched, no biggie, you can jump in um, and, yeah. and grab content after the fact. But I wanted to have the full conference experience from home uh, yes. because- I don't travel unless I have to travel. So <laughs> same, same. I was like, what if I can't make it? And I also love that you added the networking opportunities. Is that new this year or was that last year too? No, we, <laughs> we've been slowly building more and more on it. And COVID was actually like, it was interesting because we, we always have a live and a digital and then COVID got rid of the live for a couple of years. And mm -hmm. so we really like laser focused in on the digital and um, and bringing as much interactivity between attendees as possible. But sometimes attendees don't know because they jump in like after the digital has yeah. launched and, you know, so they miss the three weeks of interactive events. Yeah. Um, so it's funny because then you <laughs> see them the next year and they're like, what is all this stuff? Yeah. Where did this come from? You know, that's me. I'm like, this is so cool. I can't wait. Like this just took it to like, I don't even know yeah. what I'm more excited about the classes and the new people to learn from or the networking. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, some attendees don't even do the classes. They just, really, because um, wow. last year we had over a hundred live interactive, like chats or best-selling author Q and A's or office hours with retailers. So, I mean, they just for three weeks immerse themselves in that. Yeah. And then later I'll chat with them like, Oh, did you see this presentation? Did you see this? And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm going to get to that later. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, so funny. It's, it's funny. Everybody grabs <laughs> things. Yes. Yes. I'm like wanting to pack it all in. I'm so excited. And I think uh, your team sent me a sneak peek of the, um, uh, what was it called? The writing, uh, writing to market, I think it was. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I probably know most of this by now, I think maybe. But then when I clicked on it, like an hour passed and I was like, I had so many notes and I'm like, this is so good. I can't wait to like put this into action. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I could just keep going about Inker's Con, but um, I just want to say for everybody watching, there's, we're going to talk more about it and I have a really huge discount as well linked below. So we're going to share more about that. But first I thought it'd be really fun to uh, hear Alessandra's wisdom and advice on ways that we can improve our author careers and just take our books to the next level. <laughs> so we're going to kick off with like kind of rapid fire questions, like get to know you. Um, starting with your first book, could you tell us a little bit about it? Like the genre, the title, the year it came out? <laughs> sure. So I'm, I'm an, an OG. I, I'm, I'm old in this business. Uh, so I started self-publishing in 2012. Um, my first book was Blindfolded Innocence. And I did all of all of a lot of things wrong with that book. Um, I did not know we all do. About my market. I did not read romance. It was a sexy romance. I did not read romance. I had read Fifty Shades Grey. That was the only thing I'd ever read in the romance genre. Um, so I wrote it and broke a ton of rules of romance. <laughs> I love it. Like my male hero sleeps with another girl after he's already started dating the first girl. You know, it's like just a bunch <laughs> of things that sh shouldn't happen. Um, and I I wrote it. I read it once. I caught like 10 typos. I was like, it's good to go. <laughs> and I published it. Um, yeah. And the only thing I did right with that book was that um, I had read a ton. So I, I, I have no formal education other than what I've learned at Inkerscom. I have no formal education in writing. Um, 
but I had read a lot. So I knew what made a good story, at least for me as a reader. And the other thing I did is I had a super clicky cover. Um, and mm -hmm. it was, in fact, I have the honor of being the first band cover on Amazon. Amazon oh didn't know so what to do with my cover. This was You're before they, they had rules about stuff. And yeah. um, it took like weeks for us to figure out why, what was going on. Like we couldn't get an answer from Amazon. Amazon didn't know what was going on. But, wow. um, but I had a super click cover um, and that cover, if anyone wants to see it, it's a, it's a crude, I'm just going to warn you. Um, but you can just Google blindfold innocence, original cover. You'll see it. It was, it was called when that book sold at auction, that book ended up going on and selling. It blew up. It blew up. It hit the wow. top 10 of Amazon. It sold at auction to Harlequin. Wow. Um, and when it sold, they, when it was at auction, the industry called it the crotch shot cover. That was its like <laughs> nickname. So that tells you what the cover is basically. It's crotch shot. Oh my gosh. Um, I love it. <laughs> so, but, uh, but that, that really took off, but that book, and I always tell this story, that book, when I first published it, you know, I had like five, 10 sales, slowly it grew up to like 30 sales a day and I had great reviews. Um, but only like five or six reviews, not like a ton of reviews. Um, and then everything changed when I rewrote my blurb for that book. Wow. So that book went from 30 sales a day to 2000 sales a day, only wow. because it changed the blurb. Oh so gosh. I always use that as just a lesson that there could just be just one thing broken in your marketing, like mm -hmm. or your packaging it could be the cover, could be the blurb, could be the price point, could be your reviews. I don't know, but it could just be one thing. And if I hadn't just just one day, just been like, oh, you know, I think I'll, I'll write a new blurb. Um, I don't, I don't know that I'd be sitting here right now because yeah. that launched my entire career when that book took off. Wow, that's so funny because that's literally my next question was going to be about that because I remember mm -hmm. I've watched multiple YouTube videos, right, where you've talked about, and I just think that blows my mind that that one thing impacted your career so much. Um, so I was actually going to say, yeah, can you tell us more about that story? And also, like. That's on that side. I'm curious about the story, but then what do you do now? And how do you edit your descriptions now? And like, what makes you feel confident that they're the best they could be? <laughs> oh man, that's the, that's a million dollar question. It's tough. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, I think the issue, and so many people are like, oh my gosh, do you have that first blurb so we can compare it to the second blurb? And <laughs> yeah. No, because I didn't think that this was going to happen. Like, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure I had it in a notepad or something wherever, yeah. um, but, uh, but I think what I did is I think my first blurb wasn't super sexy and the cover was super sexy. Um, oh, so then yeah. when I wrote the second blurb, it matched the cover better. So people, it made me realize people were clicking on this cover and then they'd read the blurb and be like, eh, you know, okay. so then when they clicked on the cover and the blurb also appealed to that, that audience, then it was like, okay, I want to buy this book. Wow. Um, because this was before Kindle Unlimited. Like we had KDP Select, but we didn't have Kindle Unlimited. So it was more of a purchase like decision that they had to make. Gotcha. Uh, but, uh, oh, how do I know? I'm losing. <laughs> no, that's yeah. okay. I asked a lot of questions. Yeah. How do you feel <laughs> confident that it's like really good? <laughs> um, blurbs are tough and blurbs change. A blurb that worked, you know, eight years ago needs yeah. to be rewritten now for today's market. Really? Um, it okay. used to be, you saw a ton of first person. Then sometimes in some genres, you're seeing more third person, traditional blurbs, traditionally published books are, are always, almost always in third person. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it just, um, it just changes. I take as many blurb classes as I can. Um, Gotcha. Almost every year, InkersCon will have a blurb class. I know we'll have a blurb writing roundtable this year. Roundtables are Yay. like in our discussions. Um, and and then I always just try to get feedback from other authors. And um, in the Inkers group, which is the Facebook group you mentioned, there's always a running thread there where people can post their blurbs and get feedback. Um, oh, cool. But then I'm also just not afraid to test it. Um, and that's oftentimes I'll test it either with ads. I'll have one ad, you know, one blurb that I'm pushing or boosting and then another one and I see which one gets more clicks or I'll just run a blurb. And if in two weeks, if, if sales have plateaued, then I'll, then I'll update and run a different blurb. Okay. Um, but I always send some traffic to that page first. So I'll start like $10 a day in ads just to make sure I'm getting a hundred hits to that page every okay. day. Oh, wow. You know, 
create a baseline. So use blurb A for two weeks, see what Mm -hmm. happens, change it to blurb B. And either your sales are going to go up, they're going to go down, they're going to stay the same. But I, I often look at rank versus if you're in KU rank versus my income because page reads are delayed. You know. Oh, that makes total sense. Do you run it by um, anybody in like a friend group, like author group beforehand as well? Or do you kind of be like, I kind of know what to do and you go straight to ads? No, I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it did, like right now, I'm, I've am i been so focused on Ingers Crime, I'm down to one book a year publishing. Um, and I just don't have, like I haven't written a romance book in four years. Um, so I'm working on a re-release of one of my backlists right now. And Ooh, the first thing I did was go to like a small group of authors author friends I have and say, Hey, like, please help look at this. And they were great. They were like, Oh, you're, you're not hitting the tropes hard enough. You're not hitting the emotions hard enough. You know, I don't see the motivations of the characters. And I was like, okay, great. Um, (laughs) But there's also, there's always, almost always a thread running at Alessandra Tori Inker's Facebook group, which you mentioned earlier, Bethany. So um, you can always pop, uh, pop your blurb in that specific thread and get feedback. That is so helpful. I love that. And uh, my last rapid fire question is another fun one. Um, I noticed you kind of mentioned it that you're writing in a different genre now, which is so cool. And I think a lot of authors will be like, oh, that's so cool that you don't have to stay, you know, in the first thing you start with, you can expand and try new things. So I was curious, how many books uh, have you published since you started? And then also how many different genres have you Mm -hmm. published in? (laughs) So, um, so it's really cool writing into multiple genres, but it's also really <laughs> bad for your career and your, oh, and, really? and your audience growing. Um, sorry, my dog is like frantic. <laughs> it's like, okay. well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, like, I'm really excited about that question. Um, so, uh, so I started writing erotic romance, um, and then I proceeded to write so many different subgenres of of erotic romance. And that really, (laughs) I think as an author, you need to find your voice and you need to find your niche and you need to find where you're at. And sometimes you have to hop genres in order to do that because you could spend 10 or 15 books writing in the wrong genre. And suddenly you write a rom-com and it takes off and that's your home and that's where you should be. Um, so while it would be great for everybody to find their lane with their first book, a lot of times that doesn't happen just because your first book was maybe like a dark sci-fi romance doesn't mean you should write dark sci-fi romances for the next 10 years. Um, yes. So <laughs> I wrote a lot of different things. Um, not because I was trying to find my lane. It was just like, I was like, Oh, today I feel like writing, you know, yeah. a slow burn <laughs> romance. And next I'm going to feel like writing something else. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I would not suggest that I was successful despite my, <laughs> me doing that. And I heard the term writing to market a lot. And I was always extremely snobby about that. I was always like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to write to market. And in my mind, what writing to market was, I had a completely wrong opinion of what writing to market was. My opinion okay. of writing to market was, oh, stepbrother romances are hot right now. I'm going to write a stepbrother romance. And gotcha. that is what I thought writing to market was. I thought it was finding out what's hot and then, and then writing that. And then when, you know, something else takes off then you you jump on that (laughs) and that is not what right it might have it might have been what writing to market was at some point in time but right now what really smart and successful authors are doing is they are they are finding their lane that's that's the word that i hear over and over again at inker's con they're finding their lane and whatever it is that they are they and their brand are going to be known for and then they write in that lane every time. Um, and they learn what sells in that lane. So they aren't mm-hmm. just like me writing sexy romance with no idea what readers in that genre are looking for. They find out what re- what readers in that genre are looking for and what appeals to them and what they really love about that type of book. And then they deliver on that. So if you're going to spend months writing a book, write a book that will appeal. You know what I mean? And and yeah. you don't always know what that is. You do unless you research your genre and understand it and then market to that genre. So this was not your question. I'm I'm going on. (laughs) That's okay. Um, (laughs) Your question was, what's it like writing in different genres? Is that? that Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah. And what, how many have you written in? But I love the tangent. I love it. (laughs) So so I've written third, I've written about 30 novels total, a little over 30 novels. Um, The majority of those are as Alessandra Tori. And they are sexy romance. Um, and then the other, my other pen name is A.R. Tori. 
Um, I did not intend to have a second pen name. It was a requirement of one of my publishers. I hated having a second pen name for a really long time until, oh, until I really better understood what branding was. And now yeah. I, and now I am, I like having two pen names because A.R. Tory is very segmented. A.R. Tory writes psychological thrillers, typically okay. set in California, um, in oftentimes wealthy environments. That's, that's kind of A.R. Tory's domestic suspense, psychological suspense. Um, that's so cool. <laughs> and, and all of those books are traditionally published except for, um, the ghost writer. And then okay. Alessandra writes sexy romances. Um, so gotcha. those, are, those are my two worlds. Either They're so different. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, that's really cool. And <laughs> Wow. Oh my gosh. I love it. And I love the tangent too, because the, all the advice built into that is so important. Um, and obviously you have tons of valuable experience in publishing and wisdom to share about that. So that brings us to our main topic today, which I was jokingly calling leveling up as an author, but like AKA improving our author career in like all different ways, writing, editing, publishing, marketing, um, and just hearing from you, like what propelled your book to have okay. the success that they've had. So I'm super excited. I thought we could start with the writing since, you know, at the beginning. Um, and I realized that each of these areas could probably dedicate hours to, but what is like one thing that yeah. has helped you to improve and grow in your writing specifically? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And so, and writing is the one thing I noticed. So in the four kind of what you referred to is what we at Inkerscon call the four pillars. So writing, oh, marketing, cool. advertising, and business. Um, okay. And I really think for you to maximize your potential that you focus on all four. But it's funny because we can see the classes that everyone gravitates to. And really? everyone gravitates to marketing classes. I was uh, just going to guess that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the sexy thing, you know, oh, right? Funny. So everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about writing? Sure. Um, I want to know how to sell more books. Um, yeah. But writing to me is really the most important because it is so much easier to sell a product that is strong, you know, yes. um, and you can make a vacuum look really cool, but if it doesn't <laughs> suck up yeah. stuff and not get clogged, yes. like it's going to be much harder for you, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, that was a really bad analogy, but, um, no, I like that. That was perfect. <laughs> I love it. But, uh, the, um, and that's analogy that just on another tangent that I use with yeah. blurbs, <laughs> talking about blurbs, like I realize when I do, when I'm in the market and I'm looking for a vacuum and I go there, I don't want to read a lot of, of this is, this changed. I used to put like review snippets at the top and things like that, but it was like, mm -hmm. I want to know if I'm getting what I'm looking for. And it's yeah. really important when you write your blurb that you're telling them what they're getting. And so you're telling them the tropes and you're telling them okay. the type of experience they're going to get. And, you know, yeah. and you're communicating yeah. that through your blurb. Um, so that's just a side note. I love, no, I love that. Right. <laughs> um, I, my best advice to anyone with it in, in regards to writing and craft is to, is to learn as much as you can because you never will know enough. And yeah. the majority of my learning was done through just writing and writing and writing. And at, with every single book, I got better. Um, but it wasn't until I was like five or six books in when I started like wanting to create courses and content and videos for YouTube that I was like, what is my process? Like I, I yeah. wasn't even aware of what my process was or how I would write a scene or how I would create a character. It was just all just stuff I was doing innately yes. without, yeah. um, without really understanding. And when, once I started diving into how I wrote, then I was able to really understand how to get better and how, you know, and realize what my weak points were. And I would avoid writing certain types of scenes because I wasn't good at those types of scenes, you know, I get that. Um, yep. <laughs> and so sometimes I would engineer an entire book around trying to avoid writing an emotional <laughs> bonding scene between two characters. Cause I didn't know how to do that. Um, so I, Kyla stone, who's a, she was, she spoke at Inker's con last year. Um, she writes apocalyptic, um, fiction, a huge bestseller. Um, and she talked about writing to market um, and she's a fantastic, mm -hmm. but what she does with what I love is she reads after she finishes writing each book, she, she takes a break and she reads a craft book. So Ooh, in between I every like that. book that she writes, she reads a, a different book on craft. And I was wow. like, I love that, you know, and, and that's something I've been really trying to do ever since I learned that from her. Um, and she has a fantastic, um, we have an Inker's con blog post about like 
her five, top five craft book recommendations. Ooh, fun. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, but that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to read more books on craft and just take in as much information mm-hmm. as I can about craft, because the more, you know, the easier every book is. Yeah. I love that advice. And just probably also craft books and any books, right? Any books yeah. in your genre, even maybe 100%. specifically. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And then how about the editing process? Is there anything that you feel like took that to the next level for you, whether well, developmental I love copy? To edit. So <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mainly because my first drafts are horrible. I mean, I'm, just, I'm a very, very, I'm a pantser. So my first yeah. drafts are messy <laughs> and disgusting. And, and I mean, they're just, they're, I mean, thank goodness I know my process because otherwise <laughs> I would be like, I should quit. Like this is, um, but I had some really great editors early on. Um, and those editors were really tough. And those editors um, taught me not to be afraid to really rip apart a book and, and throw away scenes. I throw away scenes all the time. Um, and I have no attachment to anything that I write. Um, so... <laughs> I have gotten better and better in the editing process. Um, and some of it, a lot of it's learning how to self edit. Um, but a lot of it is just, um, not being afraid to work, you know, mm-hmm. and it is, um, it is hard, especially if you have a deadline looming and I, and I push deadlines a lot. Um, because sometimes some books just need more, you know, and, and yeah. if I was an outline, I'd probably have a cleaner process. I interviewed Dean Coons. And he, his first draft is so clean, but it's because he Mm. writes, um, he writes like whatever he writes for that day. And then he goes through it like eight times before he writes another scene. He, he goes through it and goes through it and goes through it. Then he prints it out and he hand edits it like with a pen and paper. Um, Oh my gosh. And then he goes (laughs) through and, and does another round and then he moves on to the next scene. So by the time he reaches the end, He's pretty done. He yeah. So clean. Yeah. Wow. And, he, and he's a pantser too, but, um, but he just kind of knows, knows his process. And he also said about halfway through he, which is exactly the same way I am. And it's probably how 70% of us are hates the book is convinced the <laughs> book is horrible. And it's stupid. Oh my gosh. And he yes. Push it to the side. <laughs> yeah. But I love, cause he's written like a hundred <laughs> books and I was like, Oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that because <laughs> imagine being a first time like I can't think that it's hard for me to remember back that far but I'm so glad I didn't have that that hit me with my first book I was way overconfident with my first book I'm like this is a masterpiece you know (laughs) thank goodness that I didn't have that normal paralyzing self-hatred towards my book halfway through like I have now because I'd be like oh like I gotta quit like this is this is dumb (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. That makes me laugh. I love that. What a cool process. Um, Okay. So what about when it comes to publishing? I know we talked already about your book's description and I think that obviously Mm -hmm. had a massive impact, but is there anything like on top of that that you think maybe made your publishing process more successful? I think just learning, um, learning packaging, proper packaging. Um, mm-hmm. And there's, there's just so much. There's always, uh, if you attend IncursCon this year, keep an eye out for keywords, roundtables. Roundtables are like um, live um, teaching and discussions on a certain topic. Okay. Um, Ooh, cool. And we have dozens and dozens of them. Any attendee can, um, can create or request a roundtable topic. We have experts come in. We, we always have the major pub, um, retailers there to talk, but keywords is something also I didn't know. I mean, I would just go in and just, you know, guess some keywords and that was yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I learned so much the last few years on keywords, blurbs, packaging, back matter. Mm-hmm. Um, if you attend this year, be sure to watch Golden Angel's presentation on marketing your backlist. Also, Ooh. Quinn Ward um, talks has a whole presentation on um, backlist, and that's what I'm really focusing on this year is um, is is my uh, not backlist back matter. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, Golden I know. <laughs> Angel's talking about backlist. Quinn is okay. talking about back matter. Um, okay, but just making sure that your packaging fits for this book, but also whatever book you're selling them next um, and making sure that it's a cohesive like purchase journey. So those are the things I'm thinking about. Like right now I just finished edits in um, a re-release I'm doing on one one of my romance novels. And now it's like, okay, what, what book am I going to sell them next? And is there a way that I can tie in this book, that book? Because that was the other mistake that I made early on is I write standalones 
Um, and so it's hard to connect yeah, them. So yeah. Like, and I, I could have written standalones and at least put them in the same city, right? And had them a kid yeah. who, like going to the same restaurants. No, like every time I, I picked an entirely new city and an entirely new place, an entirely new house, time frame. It was like, this is what I'm thinking. It's the learning process, right? Yeah. We got to learn the hard way sometimes. I totally, I wouldn't have thought of that either. Um, oh, for people who aren't watching, I should say backlist is like all the previous books published, yes. right? And back matter is uh, just the stuff at the end of the book that yeah, kind of leads, you. like you said, to the next book. No, that's okay. I, I thought, yeah, thank you. I forget. Um, <laughs> I do too. Yeah. I was like, oh, I should mention this quick because both of those are super important. Like, I don't even know which one will be more important because sometimes your back list sells your future books so well for you or your yeah. future book goes back to sell them. So that's really important. And then yeah, back matter, connecting them all together. So people find them. I love that. Um, so I, that kind of leads into my last one is the marketing tactics. Like, is there any, well, this one, it's hard to say if there's more than it's hard to nail down just one, you know what I mean? But is there any one or two marketing tactics that like really <laughs> took your book to the next level? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So I think, um, it, a lot of it circles back to product, right? So making sure that you're your packaging. And I do believe as authors, we have so much to do, right? That's mm -hmm. the gist of it. And for me, the last few years, it's been, how can I reduce my efforts and sell more books, right? Like, yeah. Isn't that what yeah. we all want to do? Like I want yes, to work yeah. less and sell more. Duh, mm -hmm. Everybody does. Oh, and <laughs> spend less money, right? Can I do that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> work less, lay on the beach and read more and, and, and you know, and hit seven. Amen to that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, um, so for me, what I've heard over and over again, um, through different avenues and, and that was, and that is one of the reasons why I created Ingress Con. I was like, okay, I know what I know. And I'm slowly realizing so much that I don't know. How do I bring the best in every, and I wanted to learn from all genres. So there are yeah. a lot of conferences that are just romance or just thriller, but I want, yeah. I want to know what the bestseller in it apocalyptic fiction is doing right and i and so i want to steal <laughs> secrets from everybody um yeah. and what i have learned how i feel is if you really <clears throat> if you write to market and if you market to market um and and your book satisfies that that there there will be organic sales that will grow and build it will take time especially if you're a new author but mm -hmm. The way the algorithms work on retailers and on social media is books will take off on their own. Um, right. And and if we can just focus on writing the best books we can um, and properly packaging them and giving them everything they need to succeed, then I strongly believe. And it's easy for me to say because I do have an audience, but I've also like been out of the um, romance game now for four years. So mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see what my re-release will do. Um, oh, wow. But um but in, and then you have to, and you have to publish consistently, right? So you can't do what I just did, which is leave romance for four years and then pop back in. Um, so we're, we're going to see what happens. Um, but, uh, but, but that's what I'm, I'm learning how important packaging is. And then there's mm -hmm. just also the phenomena of TikTok. Um, yeah. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it just is insane. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but what it has also taught me is that how important hooks are, how important tropes are. And how important it is that your marketing addresses that because that is what is TikTok is selling books, but they're selling books through hitting the tropes, hitting the emotional yeah. triggers. Um, and you can, you can steal secrets from that by using that in your blurb and in your marketing that you do on other social media platforms. Thank you so much for sharing these tips with us. I love that. And I know we're just brushing the surface. Honestly, there's like so many other things that I could ask you and I would love to ask you, but, um, for the sake of time, I was hoping we could chat more about Inker's Con because I know everybody watching is probably on the edge of their seats at this point to hear more about this conference and, um, I know it's going to be so valuable for a lot of people watching. So what is Anchors Caught like overarching picture um, and how does it help indie authors? <laughs> Absolutely. So Anchors Con, so it's funny because our topic today is leveling up and hitting the next level. Yeah. It, in a nutshell, what Anchors Con mm -hmm. is, it's an author's conference. So what that means is it has um, knowledge classes, but it also has interactive discussions and opportunities, um, opportunities to network, but op also opportunities to meet with companies and retailers that you normally wouldn't have mm. access to. So, so cool. <laughs> um, what is special about Inkers Con is that we have the live conference, which already happened 
All of the presentations were held there, but they were all recorded by a team of videographers, and then they're packaged and released to our digital audience. And our digital digital audience is like 10 times bigger than the yeah. live audience, and that is a really robust environment <laughs> and launch. And so we have three weeks of activities for the launch of that digital conference, and that starts July 22nd. So if you're watching this after the fact... Bethany does have a discount, but you can jump in after the fact and you can watch all of the recordings. You can watch recordings of the roundtable discussions and all of that. Um, and, and attendees have access to all of that, the classes, the recordings, the best-selling author Q&As, um, any retailer presentations for six years. So um, wow. we have four pillars, marketing, business, advertising, and craft or writing. Um, and you might not be ready for Amazon ads class right now or advanced Facebook um, ads right now, but in three years you might be. So that's yeah. kind of, we want to make sure you have plenty of time or, and we have attendees who bought the conference every single year. And so when they're like, okay, I'm ready to write to market, they can go back and have four years of classes that from different speakers on writing to market and they can kind of binge on, on those things all at one time. So yeah, that's, um, that in a nutshell is uh, <laughs> what Inkers kind of Yes. And there's, I think, 27 classes mm -hmm. now when every single class is like a different author with a different background mm -hmm. and a different like success, amazing story. So I thought that was really cool. I saw Theodora Taylor was here, right? Yeah, we, um, have, we have a fantastic so lineup. We have like bestsellers like LT Ryan and every T Ryan makes just, I mean, hits the top of the list. Um, wow. But what was cool when I was talking with LT, his name's Lee, about planning his presentation, I realized that he really is like a showrunner for books. Like he has, wow. he works with a lot of co-writers and, and he'll have books brought to him and they'll work through the problems and figure out how to make it more marketable and more, you know, enjoyable to readers. And I was like, this is what I want you to talk about. Like, you yeah, know, like this, because a lot of us have broken books and we don't yeah. know why they're broken. Um, yeah. And so just see, getting a glimpse into that. Melanie Harlow, who's a number one Amazon bestseller, she yeah. has spoken at Ingers Con, I think, every year. Wow. And she is amazing. <laughs> she is fantastic. If I know you have access from one of the last years. Yep. Yep. If you go back <laughs> and watch her presentation, she talks a lot about writing, like finding a lane. And this yes. year, her presentation is a little different because she's talking about what to do when you hit kind of a rut. Like you're, Ooh. you're in a lane and you're tired of it or you're stuck Ooh, and you know, how you can kind of maintain and satisfy your audience while still giving yourself some creative freedoms. So oh, I'm really, um, really excited <laughs> to watch her presentation, but yeah, we have Theodore Taylor. We have Ness Johnson who's talking about secrets from, I remember Friday. her from yeah. 2021, right? Yeah. <laughs> another, I could watch Ness Johnson teach. Yes. All day long. <laughs> um, so, uh, so there's just, it's a fantastic lineup. I'm so excited. And so many of the classes, like Misty Beller, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm butchering her last name, but she's a Kate, she's a Kindle limited author, makes like over $500,000 a year. And, wow. um, but she's in KU and over half of her income comes from non KU places. So she talks about how wow. you can diversify your income because um, okay. if something happened to Amazon, you know, bucket, yep. she diversifies, yep. <laughs> her, diversifies her income. And that was a fantastic presentation. That was one you know, you just don't know until they get up on stage and they speak. Um, yeah. And I was excited <laughs> by the topic, but I, I was just like, I, I loved every minute of her presentation. Um, and the other thing that we're, I heard a lot about this year is Selling Direct. Selling Direct is also just Ooh. a really great um, okay. avenue that a lot of authors taking that I didn't know a lot about. And now, and I watched that presentation, I'm like, well, I have to do this. Like, you know, <laughs> so. Uh, Oh, so yay. Oh, I'm excited. That's one of the things that honestly, I like, I'm, I'm doing it, but I'm not doing it as well as I want to. And I'm like, mm -hmm. let's hear more about this. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I was also going to ask you before I forget about the, um, uh, what are they called again? Not the round tables, but the, I guess the networking um, opportunities. Are those kind of sure. like all over the place for people to kind of get in at different times or how did those work? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so from July 22nd to August 10th, I believe is our three weeks of launch. And so during those every weekend we have like a full, a full schedule of events. Um, Ooh, so we'll fun. have like speed networking where you can like come in and do like round robins and meet different authors. Um, we'll okay. also have, that's when like Amazon will come and they'll do okay. open office hours. Kobo will be there to answer questions, draft to digital. Okay. Um, so we'll have, and then we also each Sunday, we have four different best-selling authors that do live Q and A's with our attendees. 
And wow. then also on those weekend schedules, we'll have featured roundtables. And featured roundtables are typically um, an attendee coming on, an expert in some way, and speaking on a certain topic. Sometimes it's like avoiding burnout. Sometimes it's like oh, um, Patreon, you know, yeah, <laughs> Patreon, whatever. It's, it's a bunch of different topics. Um, and those are moderated. And those are like on our official schedule. But then okay. throughout the week, there's um, there's writing sprints going on. There's co-working sessions. There's strategy sessions um, where you that. can like plan out your goals and you know identify your strengths and weaknesses and prioritize things. So those are all like interactive events we have going on. And then we have our traditional roundtables. And our traditional roundtables, I call them kind of the wild wild west because um, <laughs> they're they're everything. They're they're networking. We always have ask the guys typically show up and do something. That's a group of podcasters that come on and um, answer, you know, they, they just open themselves up to answering any questions about relationships or about, you know, and they're yeah. writers also. Um, okay. So we'll have like different discussions on forensics and just all sorts of wow. things. Like authors in Canada who want to connect with other authors in Canada um, wow. or book signing. So those happen, some of them happen at 10 o'clock at night. Some of them happen at four in the morning, <laughs> an Australian group, you know, um, yeah. so it, they happen throughout the three weeks. Um, just at any point in time, you can look at the calendar, you can jump in and you can join, you'll have the link, um, and you can participate. And it's just, I can't take credit for our community. It's such a great community. Um, it's such a warm and welcoming and ready to share mm -hmm. information community. Um, and, uh, and they just, they're fantastic. They're fantastic. And, yes, and yeah. we've often had requests to do roundtables throughout the year, but I think it's really important that there's kind of a focused time because people yeah, for set sure. aside and, um, and they value it where if it was any time in the year, people, you know, it wouldn't be as well attended. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so excited to attend a second time. I can't wait, seriously. Um, and before I forget, I should say I've been building up to this, you guys. So if you've been waiting for it, I have a $50 discount code, which is amazing. Like I am a, officially an affiliate for the conference. I'm super proud to be an affiliate. Um, and when Alessandra and her team gave me this $50 discount, I was just blown away. I'm like, that's a huge saving. So I put the code below. It's Bethany23. When you're signing up for it, don't forget to use it because it obviously saved you a lot of money. <laughs> um, but I will link the conference below. And before we like move on from that to the last kind of fun outro questions, is there anything about the conference that I didn't think to mention? Um, yeah, I do want to just say, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bethany's code, um, you can use that on the payment plan or the pay in full. So we, you awesome. can split it into two payments um, and her code will come off the first payment or, um, and you get immediate access. I mean, awesome. well, not immediate, you'll get immediate access when it starts, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you don't have to make both payments before July 22nd. Gotcha. Um, okay. and the other, um, just aspect of the conference that I didn't mention was business. We are very, very business focused and it's I love just that. more about just helping you look at your author career kind of as a business, but mm -hmm. no, um, everything we talked about today, um, with Bethany's code, you'll be able to, um, have full access to it. And if you are watching this presentation after the fact, and maybe in September, October, you can still jump in. Um, yes. so, and just enjoy, enjoy the content, um, at, at your own pace. So uh, every, that. everything, if you are like, oh my gosh, I'm working, you know, or I'm going to be out of town the first week of August, it's okay. Everything is designed for later viewing or to watch at your own pace. So, um, I love that. so it's, a, it's all right. If you have some, if you don't have three weeks to set aside, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's not intended to be like that. Are the round tables the same way too, where it's like, you can watch those in the future and, um, and the, now, all all the other the, kind of things. Yeah, all of the future <laughs> roundtables, which are on our weekend schedule, those are all recorded um, and oh, available awesome. to watch anytime. The traditional roundtables, which happen like anytime, that's up to each one of those hosts. Some of them don't want to gotcha. record them because they want to have like a private conversation, but um, a lot of them do record them. And so any ones that are recorded, we we post um, and but the attendees are always aware if if it is being recorded or if it is not being recorded. Gotcha. Oh, I love that. That's so cool. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. I can't wait. I'm so happy that you shared this with us and the discount is really amazing. Thank you for giving that to everybody. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you for, for sharing this with your audience. It was really great to be on here today.
Yes, absolutely. And so let's do the fun outro questions. Um, I have what's coming up next for you in publishing. And I think you kind of touched on it, but I'm super curious. No, I, I would love to know what's coming up next for me in publishing. Um, <laughs> I just had a book release, so I'm still in release mode. It came out like last Ooh. week or week before a fatal affair. Congratulations. It's available now. Um, and, uh, and I'm working on a re-release of, um, an, an older book I had that was a bestseller, but has kind of dropped off the radar and rebranding it, repackaging it. Um, and I'm really hoping the TikTok generation finds it and loves it. Yeah. So fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, and then, uh, and I'm under contract right now with my publisher. So I need to write another book. I have a deadline, <laughs> September 23rd. Um, oh my gosh. So, yeah. <laughs> and I've written like 3000 words. So I need to, um, ah, so it's yeah. coming up fast. <laughs> I can leave. Yeah. Most, most <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Maybe you'll do some of the writing sprints with yes, on the anchor side. I'll be there every month. <laughs> awesome. I love that. And then uh, where can we find you online? Uh, all the fun places, including the Alessandra Tori Anchors Group. <laughs> yeah. So um, Alessandra Tori Anchors Group is a Facebook group. Um, we have over 20,000 members. We'd love to have you there. Um, and other than that, the only real social media I'm on typically is Instagram and I'm barely on that. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to be more active on uh, TikTok. <laughs> I heard you have to post for two months before they start showing your stuff. So I'm in like week three. Um, so we're going to, I have the same problem where it's like, I want to, but it's so much work. It's so much work, it's so but fun. it's so fun. So, yeah. And it's so distracting. I, I had deleted mm -hmm. the app for like a year because I was like, oh my gosh, I, I was spending an hour a day on the app. Um, yeah. and I don't have an hour a day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. so <laughs> now I'm trying to hop on there, make my videos and, and leave and not be distracted by the funny videos. Yes. Oh my gosh. So similar. I have the same problem where I'm like, if you have to like watch and doom scroll to like learn how to do it, then that's wasting time. <laughs> Yeah. But yes, I love it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic week.